I am the uh, Grafton County Commissioner from District 3, and Plymouth is one of the towns, one of the 15 towns in, in the district that I serve. And I'm here uh, with this little get-together to share with you what's going on in the Grafton County, New Hampshire government. And I want to thank uh, Pemmy Baker TV for allowing me to make these little uh, presentations and, and for hosting me to, to do this. So I thank them very, very much for all of their technological expertise. As I said, I'm uh, a Grafton County Commissioner. Uh, Grafton County is one of 10 counties in New Hampshire. Uh, the, um, each county in New Hampshire is, does have a, a board of commissioners, three commissioners in each county. And I serve with two other commissioners. Um, the present chairman of the board is Commissioner Wendy Piper from District 1, which uh, is the uh, towns of Hanover and Enfield and the city of Lebanon. And then I also serve with uh, Commissioner Linda Lauer from District 2, uh, which are the towns up in northern and western Grafton County. And again, I am the county commissioner from District 3, serving the 15 towns on the eastern and southern end of uh, Grafton County, which includes Plymouth and Holderness and Hebron, and up to uh, Warren and down to Alexandria, Bridgewater, Bristol, and all the towns in between. So the purpose of, again, my little get-togethers with you is to explain to you, share with you what is going on in county government. Now, the Grafton County Commissioner duties are governed by state statute. And the particular statute in our New Hampshire RSAs, Revised Statutes Annotated, is RSA 28. And essentially, the county commissioners in each county in New Hampshire are responsible for the operation and maintenance uh, of a nursing home, the uh, operation and maintenance of a county jail and house of correction. And originally, uh, and we still have one in Grafton County, a very important part of our county operations is a county farm. So the counties were started in New Hampshire in the 1870s, and we're continuing on providing these services at the nursing home for our elderly uh, residents, uh, the House of Correction and Jail for the criminal justice system, and for the farm, which was originally designed and set up to feed the folks in the nursing home and in the jail and House of Correction so that there would be a food supply for them, a reliable, safe food supply. And, you know, we're trying to continue on with that uh, at this time. But a lot has changed in between, and we're going to be talking about that in, in what um, has been dubbed the Farm Dock Program at Grafton County, F-A-R-M-D-O-C. And we'll be talking about that more over the next uh, couple of months as that farm dock program is implemented and instituted. Essentially what the farm dock program is designed to do is to go back in time and once again feed the uh, inmates, the residents of the Department of Corrections, essentially 98.8% uh, off of the county farm. Vegetables, fruit, meat, dairy products, uh, you know, the meat being beef and, and pork and chickens and, uh, again, vegetables, uh, winter vegetables. So we're going to be talking more about that as that, is, as that is implemented. The county commissioners in Grafton County have weekly meetings. We meet every Tuesday morning starting at 9 o'clock uh, up at the uh, county complex in North Haverhill uh, on the second floor, second floor conference room. And this time of year, and we started uh, our first budget hearing uh, last Thursday morning up at the county complex uh, in North Haverhill, 
Uh, for our budget hearings, uh, we are, the, the county commissioners are responsible for putting together a county budget to run the nursing home, the jail, house of correction, and the farm, and also to put forward uh, proposed budgets for the other county officials. Uh, and that would be the Register of Deeds, uh, the Constitutional Offices of County Sheriff, Sheriff Stiegler, and the county attorney, uh, County Attorney Marcy Hornick, and the county treasurer, Karen Leot Hill, uh, and you know other things that the county commissioners over the years have determined to be uh, important uh, things for the for the county to do. But the other things, uh, in addition, again, to the nursing home, house of correction, and the farm, the other things that the statute provides for are not requirements. Uh, these are things that can change as the commissioners feel the need to meet uh, the needs uh, of the uh, citizens and residents of Grafton County. And that's going to change over time. And uh, that does affect our budget. And again, we're, we're right in the uh, b very beginning uh, of our budget hearings. And we'll have our second budget hearing tomorrow, uh, Thursday, the 18th of M March. And tomorrow we will be hearing presentations from the Department of Corrections at 9 o'clock, the Alternative Sentencing Program, which involves uh, juvenile diversion and um, adult diversions from the court system at 10 o'clock. At 10.30 will be the Register of Deeds, Kelly Monahan. Um, and uh, I'll tell you, the Register of Deeds... That's the one department in Grafton County, and which is kind of unique to some of the other counties in New Hampshire, that makes a lot of money for the county. Right now, the Registry of Deeds uh, under Kelly Monahan has already exceeded their revenues for this fiscal year that we're in, the fiscal year uh, 2021. So we appreciate that. And then uh, at 11 o'clock tomorrow, we will be discussing the commissioner's budget and miscellaneous items. And then there'll be uh, two more weeks after that of department hearings. So what's the other thing that's important for you folks to know is each one of the commissioner meetings on Tuesdays and the budget hearings on Thursdays are available to be seen by the public via Zoom. And I don't know an awful lot about Zoom other than I know push a couple of buttons on my laptop computer, and I think I'm in there. So if you go to the uh, Grafton County Commissioner website, and if you Google Grafton County, New Hampshire, or Grafton County Commissioners, New Hampshire, you can get to the Grafton County website, and you'll be able to find a link to get to the County Commissioner meetings and to also get to the uh, County Commissioner budget hearings. And I really urge you folks to attend these Zoom meetings. It's very important to me as your county commissioner to get your feedback, to hear what your concerns are. I'm only one of three, so any action taken by the county commissioners, it's, uh, you know, it's based upon you know, majority vote. I'm one of three, and I want to hear what you folks have to say as we go forward in terms of funding uh, the county operations, funding the other uh, constitutional government uh, operations, sheriff, uh, treasurer, uh, county attorney, and the registry of deeds. So I look forward to getting that information. And forgive me if I keep looking off because I've got to keep an eye on the time. Um, uh, so just bear with me. There's so, there's so much to share with you that I have to uh, be careful that I don't run over my time. And uh, they have, uh, PBTV has offered me, uh, actually they've offered me a second opportunity to give more information, but right now I'm only going to stick to one time a week, if that's all right with you folks. Uh, again, we have, a, we have an agenda that's put together by our uh, new uh, county business administrator, Andrew Dorsett. Uh, he's, he's a county resident, and with the help of our... Uh, uh, County Administrative Assistant Samantha Norcross, Nor Northcross, 
uh, they put together an agenda for the uh, county commissioners and the items on our agenda yesterday uh, was a uh, the monthly report from the high sheriff of Grafton County, Sheriff Jeff Stiegler, and he came in and made a, a presentation. He also brought two of his outstanding staff members uh, to the meeting in case we had some questions of them, and uh, uh, two outstanding uh, uh, young men uh, in the department. Uh, one deals with uh, a lot of electronic technical things that uh, I don't know an awful lot about, but I'm learning. And then uh, the, the other young man is a detective in the uh, Grafton County Sheriff's Department. And again, the, the Sheriff's Department is governed by statute as well. The duties of the sheriff are covered under RSA uh, 104, RSA 105, and RSA 106. Mixed in with that is other uh, 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 law enforcement agencies, police, police in the towns, state police, uh, wardens, things like that. But uh, the, the powers of the sheriff uh, really are essentially three items. Uh, to provide uh, civil service, uh, that is to, uh, you know, if there's a lawsuit going on and as the court rules require, that uh, the defendant in a civil or respondent uh, in a uh, civil action is entitled to be served with the papers to have notice of what's going on and the sheriff does that. Sheriff is also uh, responsible for providing courthouse security, the superior courthouse security. And up in Grafton County uh, at our complex on uh, the uh, uh, Dartmouth College Highway, in the town of North Haverhill, um, right near the uh, 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 Grafton County uh, Senior Center. I don't think they call it Grafton County, but the uh, Senior Center up there, there's a, the, the county uh, facilities are on a 25-acre complex, and that's where the county nursing home is, the county administration building, um, the alternative sentencing building, which used to be called the uh, uh, county commissioner's office, uh, the farm buildings, the dairy farm, the, the chicken coop, the piggery, uh, the uh, house of the house of correction, the new house of correction, it was built sometime around 2011, uh, and we have a big uh, county courthouse uh, that is pretty much uh, used mostly by uh, the state government for the state court. Uh, maybe some of you have gone up there for some. Uh, uh, motor vehicle registrations up there and the uh, state probation officers are up there as well as the county attorney's office is up there. Um, so this is all on a 25 acre complex and uh, the sheriff's office is also uh, in the, the uh, bottom level of the uh, county courthouse up there. So uh, that's again. That, that's some of the, the um, duties of the of the of the sheriff's office is to serve civil service, and then uh, other uh, law enforcement uh, duties as they might arise as the sheriff uh, deputies and the sheriff are out on the road. They do have the authority to stop vehicles for motor, uh, motor vehicle violations, and if they see a, a you know a, a criminal offense being committed in their presence, they have the power to make arrests. Um, the Sheriff's Department has also gotten involved in some other law enforcement uh, areas, and uh, that's something that we're discussing uh, in, the, in the Sheriff's budget for this year. Uh, the uh, ability of those who want to take advantage uh, of our elderly and uh, do some terrible things to our young people uh, the Sheriff's Department has uh, developed some uh, investigatory uh, uh, attributes within the department uh, to investigate these uh, elder abuse and uh, uh, pedophile and uh, pornography uh, activities that are going on in, in our county and beyond. And so uh, we have to be careful that uh, our county uh, activities uh, are within the scope and the ability of the county taxpayers. 
Now, if the county is able to recoup by doing some of these things for outside agencies, other towns in the state, uh, that as long as we're charging a fee and recouping that to help offset the cost of these things, and uh, certainly the, you know, with all this technical uh, needs when you're doing some of these uh, criminal investigations, uh, the, the, you know, the cost for the equipment is quite high. And so we, we've got to make sure as county commissioners that we are being good stewards of uh, your tax dollars, you folks here, residents and taxpayers in Grafton County. So we'll be talking about that more. Uh, again, last week, uh, last Thursday, the uh, 11th, uh, the Sheriff's Department uh, made his initial, or the High Sheriff, Sheriff Stiegler, made his initial uh, budget request, and we're, we're, the county commissioners are looking at that. We also had the proposal from the Human Resources, and I talked last week about all the positions, employment positions that are open in Grafton County. Uh, for registered nurses, licensed practical nurses, uh, licensed uh, nursing assistants, uh, people in the dietary department. Uh, we're looking for uh, people to serve in the Department of Corrections. Even though our inmate population is very, very low due to the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdowns and uh, changes in the bail uh, statutes, uh, you know, who can be bailed out, uh, there's there are our inmate population is very very low uh, but we're still looking for uh, inmate uh, we're looking for staffing uh, corrections officers um, and the county will train you if, if that's something you're interested in male and female uh, please get a hold of the human resources department at Grafton County again you can access that on the uh, county website the Grafton County New Hampshire website and uh, you can see all the positions that are uh, available. We have uh, positions in housekeeping, and we have positions, um, again, uh, in, at the Department of Corrections and the nursing, and the nursing home. So please take, take advantage of those opportunities. Um, talking about the pandemic uh, and the uh, COVID-19 thing, that has created some challenges for us in, in county government. Let me give you one example uh, that's affected our uh, income at the county, uh, affected uh, the services uh, and who we can provide services to. For example, in the fiscal year 2021 uh, budget, uh, residents in the nursing home, we have several uh, categories of residents in the nursing home. We have Medicaid residents, Medicare, residents, we have private pay residents, and we have veterans. We have, we have some beds there for veterans. And in our uh, 2021 fiscal year budget, we budgeted uh, to have 92 Medicaid residents in the nursing home, and Medicaid is uh, federal and state dollars paying for these folks to come in. We had uh, four Medicare folks budgeted, and Medicare comes from the federal government. We budgeted for 22 private pay folks, that is people that can pay their own way or they have insurance, uh, private insurance to pay for their care. And we had uh, two slots uh, identified for veterans for a total of 120 uh, uh, residents. 120 beds is what our population capacity is in the nursing home. Well, so far this year, um, the Medicaid uh, resident uh, count has been 83. We were hoping for 92, and we were, you know, we only have 83, so that's a significant reduction. Medicare residents, instead of the four that we budgeted for, we're only uh, providing for three Medicare residents. Uh, in the uh, private pay realm. Uh, we, as I said, we budgeted for 22. We're only serving 21 folks. So instead of the 120 residents in the nursing home we hoped to have served, we're only serving 108 folks. So that's, you know, that has an impact on our um, income uh, and our revenue for the county. And we have uh, a new uh, 
finance manager, financial administrator, uh, Julie Libby, although she's been an employee of the county. I don't want to say how many years, Julie, but she's been, she's been a, you know, a steward of the county funds uh, at the time that she was also the business uh, manager. And, but she's now just concentrating solely on financial issues uh, for, for the county. And so she gives us uh, a monthly report as well. And uh, she reported, uh, gave us a report on uh, yesterday, at yesterday's meeting where she talked about, she reviewed the February financial report, you know, where, where we, our, our revenue figures are not being met, except in the Registry of Deeds. Register of Deeds, Kelly Monahan is doing a great job. And, and partly of that is because the, the sales of properties and houses in Grafton County are way, way above of, of what they are, or what they have been in the past, particularly because of the uh, pandemic. Uh, people from California and New York and New Jersey want to live in a safe rural county like Grafton County, New Hampshire. And we've got the properties and it's, it is raising up the values of properties. But again, uh, Registry of Deeds is making some good money on the um, uh, transfer stamps that happen whenever property is transferred. Um, uh, Julie talked a little bit about the American Rescue Plan uh, that, uh, the, uh, that President Biden uh, passed uh, or signed into law after being passed by the federal uh, Congress and the federal uh, U.S. Senate. And Grafton County is expected and hopes to receive under the American Rescue Plan, also known as the COVID-19 uh, plan, uh, the amount, I'm, I'm going to give you a figure, but, but don't count on it. You know, this is not money in the bank necessarily. But supposedly Grafton County uh, is going to get $17 million $432,836 under this plan. The thing you got to remember is this is still taxpayer dollars, okay? Uh, the American Rescue Plan is funded by taxpayer dollars. So coming from one pocket out of, out of another pocket. And the other nine counties in New Hampshire are also getting uh, similar amounts of money based upon the services that they provide uh, the uh, needs in those counties. Uh, Grafton County is one of the smaller counties. So, you know, counties like um, Hillsborough County, Rockingham County, Merrimack County, you know, the amounts that they're getting are much higher than what Grafton County is getting. Um, uh, the uh, fi uh, finance manager updated us on the uh, GOFER program, the G-O-F-E-R-R, -R, which was the stimulus plan, the COVID-19 plan from uh, President Trump. And she gave us an update on that. And uh, the Federal Emergency Management um, Agency um, is involved in that. And originally we were set up, Grafton County was set up to have a 25% uh, a match from FEMA, if I'm reading this right, uh, so that we could get personal protective equipment for our nursing staff and our correctional staff and our administrative staff at the county. And uh, <clears throat> we uh, also had to, uh, we reviewed from the uh, finance manager uh, a single audit uh, request that uh, will be focused on the CARES Act uh, monies. Uh, CARES Act is, is part of, that, of the President Trump's uh, uh, program from last year. Just a lot of financial things going on at, at the county. Um, we also had a report from our maintenance superintendent, Jim Oakes, and uh, we have a tremendous uh, responsibility for buildings up there. Uh, Jim has been our uh, maintenance superintendent, I think, for about 11 years. And the buildings up there that he's responsible for and ultimately the commissioners are responsible for is the courthouse, uh, the uh, county complex, which is a county administration building. Uh, and we're also responsible for the, um, of course, the farm buildings and 
there's also a maintenance building as well. So he, he gives us a four-page report about once a month and sometimes comes in uh, and gives us updates as is necessary. And um, two of the things that we had to vote on yesterday at the request of the maintenance department were fuel bids for heating oil, uh, diesel fuel to uh, drive our, our farm tractors, and propane to uh, heat the uh, Department of Corrections building. And so uh, we, we awarded a bid there, which, would, which will be in the minutes of the meeting that should be coming up in the next few days, the minutes of the March 16th meeting. And then we also bid on uh, wood chips for our uh, wood chip uh, heating plant, which heats basically all the other buildings in the county complex, the courthouse, the administration building, uh, and the county uh, commissioner building, the old county commissioner building where alternative sentencing is housed. Uh, it does not heat the, uh, the county correctional facility, which is heated by the, by the propane. Um, so the uh, bid for wood chips uh, was awarded to uh, North Country, uh, uh, I can't remember, I can't see the last name, but uh, this is an outfit out of Rumney, New Hampshire. So uh, we, are, we were pleased to be able to provide uh, that awarding that bid to the folks in uh, Rumney, New Hampshire, who do uh, work with uh, many, many uh, tree farmers here in the Grafton County area. Um, so those were the uh, three departments that we heard from yesterday, uh, the Sheriff's Department, the Maintenance Department, and the Finance Manager. Um, we uh, also have to sign off on every check for every invoice that the county pays out. The commissioners have to sign off on those invoices. And in my capacity as clerk of the county commission, uh, I have to actually sign off on and look at every invoice that uh, the county, Grafton County pays. And so that sometimes creates questions as I'm looking at some of these invoices and some of the invoices that really jump out at me are the cost for the uh, traveling nurses. Uh, th these are uh, nurses that come, that come to us because we can't meet the need for nurses, RNs, LPNs uh, in, in our nursing home. But it's a, it's, it's a crisis throughout the nation. Uh, nursing facilities just cannot find sufficient numbers of uh, nursing staff to meet the need. Every county home in New Hampshire is going through the same challenges that we are in uh, Grafton County. So one of the things that we're going to be looking at in Grafton County is maybe doing some more in-house training for LPNs and uh, LNAs so that we can have some uh, folks uh, that you know can work their way up in within the Grafton County uh, nursing uh, family. Uh, one other thing that is of importance to the folks in the Plymouth area is the uh, Grafton County Commissioners a, uh, approved a community development block grant uh, economic development application to allow the uh, Mid-State Health Center here in Plymouth to have uh, bring into, bring into uh, reality their Mid-State Daycare Center. Daycare, very, very important to uh, providing opportunities for our employees uh, in, in Grafton County, and especially in the Plymouth area. And it is my understanding that uh, this daycare center is going to be going in where the old Sears building uh, is uh, out on uh, Tenney Mountain Highway, just before you get to the uh, traffic circle. So uh, we were very pleased uh, to help uh, Mid-State Health Center uh, get the, the Community Development Block Grant in order to put in their Mid-State daycare. Okay, uh, the timer is uh, 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 indicating that I'm out of time. And I want to thank uh, you folks for listening in. If, if you need to contact me, uh, my email address is omer.ahern.jr the at symbol, gmail.com. My phone number is, and I only have one phone, I don't have a cell phone, 
My, my phone number is in New Hampshire, uh, 764-6024. Uh, I want to thank uh, the uh, other commissioners that I'm working with, Commissioner Piper, the chairman, and Commissioner Lauer, the vice chairman. I want to thank uh, PBTV for giving me this opportunity. And one other thing, uh, I just finished up my two-year term as a uh, selectman in the town of Wentworth, and I, I just want to uh, express to those folks, you know, my, uh, my, the privilege and the honor it was for me to serve with uh, Morgan uh, Courier, Francis Muzzy, um, Palmer Kelb, Arnie Scheller, and Jordan King. Uh, who were other selectmen when I was serving during these two-year period. Thank you very much. Uh, God bless the Granite State of New Hampshire, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you, and have a good rest of your week.